Hi, my name is Janice Bennett. I teach fourth grade at Pleasant Hill Elementary. These are my fabulous fourth graders. Welcome to our classroom. Now, today as we work on our, our Reader's Theater, we're going to be concentrating on what we call dialogue. A passion for teaching when I realized that, when I would be excited in the morning to get up, oh, I'm going to do this today. Also, when you see something or hear something, you think, oh, I could use that in my classroom. That would be perfect for my students. When your mind is always thinking what you can bring into your classroom, that tells me I have a passion for teaching. All right, anybody wanna share some interesting things or some celebrations that you had for your weekend? One of Miss Bennett's strengths is she gets to know those children. Mm -hmm. And when you know the children, then that personalized learning, it's just there, but she will find whatever it is that they need. I love that personalized learning that Miss mm -hmm. Bennett does. Mm -hmm. It's the relationships. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she just has such a grace about her with the children. And they know that when they're in here, they're safe. They're safe to learn. They're safe to show what they think mm -hmm. the answer can be. They're just, they have a very safe environment. She can move to any grade level. She's taught first grade, she's mm -hmm. taught third grade, she's taught fourth grade, and wherever she goes, it's just like she's been there for 20 years. Just that flexibility piece. I mean, I've had a unique opportunity to work with her as a library media specialist now and as a school counselor, and in both ways, it's a partnership. I go to her, too, you know, to work together on problems. It's, like, it's a equal partnership. Okay, turn and talk. Miss Bennett is awesome. If you don't understand a question, like me, um, I, I, need, I do horrible in math, but I kind of get it. But on Tuesday, she tutors me on her own time. She cares for you, and if you don't understand a question, she'll go over it again for you. I'm probably best known for my Bennett's Beavers thing. The Beavers have some characteristics that I want to pass on to my students. Uh, Hardworking persistence, uh, never giving up, having a goal and reaching that goal and not giving up until you do reach that goal. So bringing in those characteristics has led me to use the beavers or achievers because I think that's what I want students to be. I want them to achieve. It's so great to be, be, be a beaver. Her, her motto is beavers are achievers and, and those children realize they can achieve anything and it's thanks to what she you know ingrained in them and group listen to it because you're going to be hearing these words through the readers theater to motivate students i think the first thing you have to do is to create an environment where they feel safe you set standards and expectations high but you help them along the way so they can have the confidence to take risk and to motivate and want to learn. If I could say anything to Miss Bennett, that she's an awesome teacher and I, she really deserves to be Teacher of the Year. Keep on doing what you do best. I think I changed the lives of students by preparing them for their future steps in education, but I also think I changed it because I do try to give them confidence to take risk and confidence that they can meet their goals. I'm Leslie Bussey, second grade teacher at Lake Murray Elementary School. Welcome to our classroom. I better tell you the, the unit, whether it's square inches or square centimeters, is very important. When I really thought about and analyzed it, I couldn't decide whether teaching chose me or I chose teaching because I just feel like it's just a natural gift. I mean, people have gifts for music, for sports, and I feel like the gift that I've been given is to teach because it does come so naturally. When I was in high school, I was involved in the teacher cadet program and that just really sealed it for me. I mean, the passion just 
was there from that moment. Education has always been a huge priority in my home. My father always had a book in his hand. Um, I think I got the love of reading from him and learning from him. My mother is the most positive, confident person. Um, I think I got that from her. And I think teaching is just a gift that was given to me. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Hmm. Now she said, what if we need to find the area of a line segment? When I think of Leslie, I think she is a structured teacher, but yet she's also very student-centered. She's structured, she's consistent, and she tries new things. You listened, I saw eye contact, I heard a lot of synergizing. The, the students are active participants in the classroom. It's not me standing up in front of a classroom with 30 desks facing forward, you know, like we think of in the past. Um, the students are involved, it belongs to them, they have decisions, their um, thoughts and their opinions matter. Our class mission is to work together to learn and lead. At the beginning of school, I always like to have a big discussion about why we're here, what our purpose is, and they all had input, then we came up together kind of consolidated their thoughts into that mission statement. I use it every day to remind them and constantly redirect them back to that mission. Are you being the learner and the leader that you need to be today? Because our mission, you know, we've agreed upon that. And how are you going to do that? What are you going to work on to do that? What are you going to try to do? Be proactive. Okay, so be in charge of your choices. Mm -hmm. Leslie has high expectations for herself as well as her students. Definitely. I think about her technology and just being so techno savvy and always using the latest tools in her classroom like blogs and podcasts and just always looking for a newer and better way to reach her students. Area, area, fill the whole middle. She makes learning fun and she puts learning in songs to make it stick in our head. Miss Bussy makes learning fun because so we play games on the smart board, which is like learning games, and it's fun, and then you smile when you get the answer right. She cares about us because she knows how much we want to learn, and she teaches us stuff that we want to know about. She's the best teacher I've, I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Try to build things. Mm -hmm. There's a perimeter yeah. inside the house. Exactly. And there's an area inside the house. Absolutely. Yes. Teaching in the primary grades is just you're really building that foundation. You're setting the foundation of that child's education. And also creating confidence. That's a, a huge part of my goal is to help create confidence in the students. Um, problem solving abilities, risk takers. They know that it's okay to make a mistake, and I tell them I make them every day, and we're a team, and we grow from each other. The impact that you have really does matter. You know, it really does. You make a difference in the lives of your students, and you know that from the notes that you receive from parents, you know, years after, from when the students come back to you, and they write you letters, and you really do make a difference. I'm Debbie Devonport, English teacher at Lexington High School. Welcome to my classroom. You as the author are going to need to self-edit that. The fact that I am a teacher at all is one of my proudest accomplishments. In high school, I decided that I was going to change the world through public relations. And so I got my undergraduate degree in marketing management and in uh, journalism. And I came out and I wanted to work for um, a politician so I was lucky enough to come back here and work for Congressman Spence and while I really enjoyed that and I'm still a little bit of a political junkie I discovered that if I really wanted to make a difference and I really wanted to change people you have to start when you can change their hearts and who changes hearts teachers change hearts oh I like that See, it's got alliteration, it's catchy. Ms. Stevenport really does care about each individual and she really is passionate about what she does. She cares about knowing 
each person and I think that really means a lot. When you find somebody that really cares about you, you want to do the best for them as well. She has such a strong connection with her students. Mm -hmm. um, she, she has this ability to determine what their needs are uh, when she gives them very difficult tasks, she knows how to support them in achieving that task. Debbie will give a task with a lot of guidance, but she is the inventor of gradual release before anybody ever <laughs> called it gradual <laughs> release. She models, then she'll let them take it a step, and then she lets them go. And that's what makes for strong students, right. is they become independent learners. Your solution acknowledges yeah, so that parents issue. should do that. So then your opposing argument could, set, could be the government should have total control and say, no, they shouldn't. Parents should also have some control. There you go. Okay. See, y'all are so smart. If you have found one that you think is really a jewel, then go ahead. You can email that to me if you want feedback. If someone had asked me last year what I couldn't do without in my classroom, it would be markers and chart paper because learners of any age love markers. But if you ask me now, I'd say my iPads. They are awesome. I use them every day. Um, and I know that they're a bit of a temptation in some circumstances, but if you learn to watch kids' body language, you can tell when they're doing temple run versus when they're typing. It just really revolutionized what I'm doing in the classroom and enhanced what was already positive um, and has taken it in a, a, a completely different different direction. You will be required to submit your final draft for turnitin.com. If there's something new, if there's something exciting, if there is something going on that is um, innovative, proactive, productive, Debbie is right on it. And her purple pen doesn't stop. I mean, <laughs> it's like forever. And she'll go home and sit in front of the TV or something and get, get out those M&Ms and that, and that pen will, will just be working and working and working and working until late hours of the night. Are they using all those appeals? You know, do you see emotional appeal? Do you see logical appeal? I was so happy to have her as a teacher. I've learned so much more in her English class than I did in any other English class. And she's just been one of my favorite teachers ever. And um, I'm just so glad that I got the opportunity to be, for her to be my teacher. The real reward comes from looking at those kids and getting the, just again, the energy and enthusiasm that they have. When you see them go on and make a difference in the bigger world, and to think that in some small way that, that I was able to be a part of that, um, that's incredible, that's incredible. Hola, soy Señora Kynard. Enseño la inmersión parcial en kindergarten en la Escuela Gilbert Primary. Bienvenidos a nuestro salón. Hola. Vamos a hacer más ciencias. Vamos a hacer más matemáticas. Okay? When I come into Charlie's classroom, I think one of the things that I see and impresses me um, is the fact that she is able to create a very cohesive and dynamic learning community. She looks for the strengths in her students and she helps her students to work together as a team. And I think Charlie's strength is also her passion for her students and her ability to teach the Spanish vocabulary while teaching the core curriculum. She's really good at building that knowledge for the children. When I was in the fifth grade, my teacher decided to teach us how to count in several different languages and that ignited a passion for me and ever since then I've loved languages. When I was in high school I figured I wanted to do something that was challenging and that would allow me to use my Spanish or my French, which I was also studying at the time. I also wanted to do something for society, to serve in some way, and I thought teaching would be a good fit. So I went to college and went to graduate school, and it wasn't until graduate school when a mentor told me about Lexington One's partial immersion program, and I sought a critical needs certificate and became an elementary Spanish teacher. Cuatro, cuatro, cuatro pesos. Pesos? Cuatro pesos? Charlie is very dedicated. She 
goes the extra mile with all our students to make sure all their needs are met. Her lessons are very purposeful and meaningful and memorable for her students. She's a very engaging teacher and she makes sure to um, incorporate methods to reach all different learning styles. She has music and sounds and also visuals and manipulatives and so she really reaches all of her students. I think students need to develop intrinsic motivation to learn. So I try to make sure they have plenty of opportunities to experience what success feels like and how good that feels so that they'll remember that feeling and want to strive for it again. Bravo, 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 bravissimo, bravo, 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 bravissimo, bravo, lo hiciste en español, bien hecho. Hicimos muy bien, niños, ¿por qué hicimos muy bien? I don't think I have a single best teaching moment. I think that teaching moment repeats itself every year as I notice my kindergarten students going from no language to suddenly sharing their ideas with me, even if it's just one, one word or two words strung together. That's a really exciting moment for me. That's a huge milestone for them in learning to create with language and think in the language and communicate effectively. Where her kids and she wants us to be safe and be cared about. She is a good teacher. I love you, Senor Kiner. Tienen una cola larga. I think my students are gaining a critical 21st century skill. They're learning to communicate effectively in two languages, and in the process of learning to communicate in two languages, they're developing their higher order thinking skills, they're becoming problem solvers, and they're learning to feel confident as learners and to become risk takers, and those are things that are gonna help them throughout their school careers and later in life when they ultimately choose a career to pursue. I'm Annie Peterson, Special Education Teacher at Pleasant Hill Middle School. Welcome to my classroom. You have the fat and the ch. So is that a good thinking mistake? Beautiful. Well done. Ms. Peterson is smart and funny. She uh, helps us out with any kind of problems we have during out of school or in school. Uh, she's always there. She never turns her back and says, I can't do this. She's looking forward to the ahead and protecting you all the way. All right, number seven, Mr. Ashton. When I think of Annie, I think of someone who comes to school on mission every day to serve her students. She just exudes a caring attitude and kindness and a non-judgmental approach to everything she does. We have these nonsense sentences at the top on page 72, right? And when we say those sentences, do we sound like we're making a lot of sense? Before I was a teacher, I went to school and I kind of fell into finance because I was always very, very good at math and I found my niche. I went to school, graduated and got a great job and I went and I got my MBA and I got promoted and I was like, well, I still need to be challenged. Maybe I need to do something outside of business. Maybe I just need to kind of do a makeover with me. So I started volunteering at a place in Massachusetts called the Walker Home and School, and they served students with very severe emotional and behavioral difficulty. And when I went there to volunteer, I just felt like this is where I need to be. So I signed up for a course at Leslie College, and there's no turning back. <laughs> that was so perfect. I love it. All right. Uh, and you guys are doing a great job with when you see that kicker E, you're saying the long vowel, you're doing a good job practicing all your strategies. When I see Annie teaching, she's always at the level of the student. It's always really important to be at that level with them, especially when you're working with students who maybe have a learning disability or have a special need. I'm going to model the first sentence for you and then you can go into the other ones, okay? 
I think the most important thing you can do to motivate your students to learn is make those personal connections. I was in a resource class all through elementary and middle school because when I read, I could not remember what I read. And I remember um, feeling like I was stupid because I was always in the lowest reading group and I hated going out to see the resource teacher because I felt like everybody knew that I was going. That just made me feel bad and I keep that in my heart every day when I come to teach that when you're a struggling student you feel like everybody is looking at you and everybody knows and it is easier for everybody else. I think that it has just helped me be a better person in life and relate to my students because I tell them I know what you're going through. Do you know what we do as readers? Do you know what I did when I was in school? I would memorize words and then I never really had to learn how to sound them out. This forces your brain to sound them out, doesn't it? She actually makes little comments of personal life and reality and it's not all about just school work and everything else like that. It's uh, personal experiences and it's really fun to relate it to something besides school and get your mind off school for a few minutes. Okay, is that, now spell it out for me so I make E-L-O-T-C-H. Beautiful. If I could say anything in this picture, I would like to say thank you for everything you do for me and I love you. I could never do without my students because they bring in the excitement, the learning, um, the fun, the drama. <laughs> and so my classroom, I wouldn't need pencils, I wouldn't need dry erase markers, I wouldn't need anything. I wouldn't need anything and I wouldn't be here without the students. Hi, I'm John Paul Sellers and I teach fifth grade here at Red Bank Elementary School and this is my classroom. Everything that we do is important, right Bryson? Everything that we do. I would describe John Paul's teaching style as innovative. He has a vision of what it is to be a learner. I mean, he's just always seeing it from the kids' side. He has a way to relate to them that is just so genuine. He always is looking at how can I make this accessible to the students. Because what would be cool is if we can beat this world record with um, our own make. He's very creative, like when he's teaching us, he doesn't just say it and say, give us like paperwork. He gives us things on the computer that we can work with and work in groups and do projects. We do a ton of experiments. We're not sitting at our desks with a book in our hands. We're out doing a play for social studies or doing an experiment for science. I feel like his vision for the future is one of his biggest strengths because he can see, he can imagine it, and he can go for it. And for a lot of people, it's hard to think so far out of the box with what we're doing, but he feels so strongly about it and knows that it's the best thing for the children that his vision is his driving force. What does the vacuoles do and what does the nucleus do? What does the vacuoles do, Kayla? My career change from the ministry to teaching was always something that weighed heavily on my heart. I got my elementary education degree at PC, then I went on to Duke, got my Master's of Divinity education, and spent three years in ministry. Every single ministry that I did was school related. I was on the School Improvement Council. I was chaplain of the football team. There were just so many things that just brought me back to school. I mean, I was going and reading to kids and tutoring them and reading in math. So, it just seemed like God was saying, I'm glad that you followed what you thought I wanted you to do, but you know, I really think maybe it's time to switch over. And this is our um, thought for the week. When the sun comes up, you had better be running. He's been through a lot to get where he is right now, and so I think there's difficult things that he faces in like outside of school that you, you would never know about because he doesn't let any of that affect how he teaches, how he treats kids. He will never lose faith in you, and he always has faith in you, and he teaches you things that you will carry for the rest of your life. And give me a line here and here. The person that inspired me the most, I think, and taught me the most about getting to this point um, was my coach. Um, coach Mark Gerald was my high school varsity basketball coach. One thing I, I remember is how much he loved us. You know, I didn't play a lot, and the thing he cared the most about was 
who I was and how I, how I was doing. In the classroom, you've got star players and you've got people who play just a role. They, they're they're going to still make your class shine, but at the end of the day, they might not be out there in front as much as the stars. And um, he taught me how to manage and balance that, but he also taught me that if you treat everyone as an equal in a, in a way where they understand you personally care about each one of them, when the big game turns around and shows up, they're going to play hard for you. These kids, there's never been a time when there's been a big game, pass, map, whatever we've asked them to do, that when the time comes, they're ready to play hard. He taught me what it means to win a championship, not just at Carolina Coliseum, but he taught me how to win a championship in life. And um, I use that confidence, you know, I'll use, my, I'll use that confidence for the rest of my life to make these kids better and all the kids that I impact in the future.